card making friends and soon to be card making friends. This is Christina and today's video is day 21 of the holiday card series for 2015. So this video was supposed to go up a couple days ago, but like you all know, around the holidays, things can get kind of busy. And so I hope you all find that this was worth the wait. I'm starting out by taping down some watercolor paper to a board. This is Strathmore 5x7 cold press watercolor paper. And I'm going to be using my Molotow masking pen on top. And I'm going to draw some snowflakes. For reference, while I'm drawing my snowflakes, I'm using a metal die that I've just placed off to the side. Unfortunately, you can't see it because of the glare from my lights. But that's what I'm referencing while I'm drawing this snowflake. So if you make this card at home, I really encourage you to find some reference images for your snowflakes. Maybe you have a coffee mug with snowflakes on it or a shopping bag from doing some holiday shopping. Just anything with snowflake images on it. You could Google snowflake images or snowflake clip art to get some ideas and basically just expand your horizons when it comes to drawing snowflakes. Try to draw some different types of snowflakes. I'm using this Molotow masking pen on top of Strathmore watercolor paper and I wanted to mention this specifically because I find that it doesn't work as well on this uh, particular type of watercolor paper. I'm using this today because I taped down the watercolor paper before I had a plan for what I was going to be making and by the time I decided to do this particular card I decided to just go with it. It's not a huge deal. It's just the perfectionist in me for why I normally don't use Strathmore watercolor paper with this Molotow pen and I will describe to you why when it gets to that point in the process. So I've just drawn on all the snowflakes now I'm going to prep my paints. I'm using two different types of watercolor mediums for this card today, and that's purely because of the colors. I wanted to use these specific colors, and so I had to use two different types of mediums. The first medium is Dr. P.H. Martin's Liquid Watercolor. This is the color Blue Aqua. I picked this color because it's particularly transparent, and it's that nice blue aqua color that I wanted. I am going to squeeze out a little bit of this Winsor Newton Professional Artist Watercolor in the color Manganese Blue Hue. I'm actually not going to use this particular color on my final painting here, but I wanted to include this little bit of my video in this video because I wanted to show you that if you squeeze out a little bit too much watercolor uh, pigment or if it comes out on its own, you don't have to use it all. You can squeeze the sides of the tube and it sucks that pigment back into the tube. So it's something really important to remember so that you don't get really messy caps when you put the cap back on. So like I mentioned before, I put this blue out here and then I ended up not using it. And the blue was squeezed out onto this palette because I wanted to make a really lime green color. And I didn't have that color in any of my paints, so I thought I'll mix it. But it turns out I didn't end up using it anyway. So I just wanted to include that so you guys saw the paint squeezing out into the tube. Then also explain why you see that greenish color on the side. I'm using a flat brush here. This is a brush from Prima and I've painted on that blue aqua color in two wide stripes. I'm going to be creating a plaid pattern today, and you might remember back in my day two video for this year's holiday card series that I created a plaid pattern with red and black and a little bit of gold. This one is much more colorful, and I'm leaving gaps in between the stripes. So the white paper, the white watercolor paper is showing through. So I'm adding, I added that bright yellow stripe and I'm gonna add some of this pink color. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but this is the color Opera Rose from Winsor & Newton. It's one of my favorite pinks. It's a nice, vibrant, almost neon pink. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm mixing some of that green color and then I decided mm, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna go back to the pink. So I'm doing another stripe of pink and then I'll take that blue aqua color from Hydrus once more and I'll put that along the top. I'm going to go ahead and dry this with my heat tool. I want these stripes to be absolutely bone dry before I move on to the vertical stripes. So now I'm going to kind of recreate that same pattern going vertically. So I'm starting with the wider stripes, two of them, using that blue aqua color. And then I'll move on to the bright yellow in sort of a medium uh, stripe. 
And I wanted to mention to you, I'm just using a bunch of different brushes today. I have that larger brush from Prima, and now I've got two brushes that are silver black velvet. I'm just using whatever brushes I have on hand that are about the right width of stripe that I was looking for. And if you don't have any of the larger brushes, you could definitely just, you know, paint two stripes that are touching together and they'll come together and make a really wide stripe. You can do whatever you need to do to get varying widths of stripes. So I'm painting these all on top of each other. I did also want to mention that the reason why I picked these particular colors were because they were especially transparent. I wanted these colors to overlap and create other colors on top. So I notice where that blue aqua stripe and the yellow stripe intersect, I get a green. That's one of the reasons why I decided to not mix more of that green shade and paint it. So now I'm using my Xyron adhesive remover or adhesive eraser to take off all of the masking that I drew on earlier. One of the reasons why I don't like to use Strathmore watercolor paper is for this particular reason. It's really hard to get that masking fluid off without an adhesive remover. On other types of watercolor paper, you're able to rub it off with your fingertips, but with Strathmore, you really can't. And even then, I still get little bits that I could see in the white on the snowflakes where all of that masking didn't come off. So you might be able to see that in the final photos. I wrapped some May Arts Natural Twine around my piece here after I trimmed it down and tied it into a bow. Then I put foam adhesive on the back and adhered it down to a five by seven note card. I just used some basil marshmallow cardstock to create that five by seven card base. Now I'm placing some different sizes of sequins on my card. These are eight millimeter and five millimeter sequins from Doris. This is the crystal color of sequins. And this color is by far the one that I reach for the most. That's because it really picks up the color underneath. You'll notice that over that yellow strip that all of the sequins kind of have a yellow tinge. That's because I'm using crystal sequins from Doris. So here's the card for today. I hope you guys think it was worth it. This is a lot of fun to create and I'm really loving exploring different watercolor plaid patterns. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching today's holiday card series video. Today was day 21 and on screen I have six more card videos for you to check out and they're also day 21 but from the previous six years of the holiday card series. You can catch me at my blog by clicking on K Warner Design up in the top corner. That will take you directly to today's card video and where you can see the supplies and I have links to online stores as well. Once again thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.